Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth part of the Warframe Ghouls graphic novel or comic series summary. My name is Quad and this is the Hall of Mirrors, a series that talks all about Warframe lore. In the previous three parts of the Ghoul series, Excalibur Warframe saved an Ostrong girl named Mitsuki from the Grenier. He repelled the Grenier, but they came back with the never-before-seen ghouls, which engaged Excalibur in an epic battle, prompting the Lotus to call for Tenno backup, Warframe Mag. A Solaris United operative found her way to Mitsuki and defended her from the Grenier until Mag arrived. In the midst of battle, Little Duck also stole an Orokin key from Captain War, which could be used on an Orokin vault which they slowly approached after an intense hike. In the caves of the cavern, they fought the Grenier ghouls, who wounded Mitsuki's hand, but alas, they found a vault and opened it, leading them to the Orokin derelict, infested with infestation. While they traversed the Orokin derelict, Captain Vor got reinforced by a massive army of the Grenier queens themselves, who stormed to the vault in hope to reveal its secrets and destroy the Tenno. On the Tenno side, Dark Aura filled the air as the Lotus guided Mitsuki, Mag and Lil Duck through the eerie expanse. Her scans unveiled a startling revelation. Hidden deep within the derelict lay the Arogia Medica, a coveted artifact whose purpose had caught the attention of the Grenier. The Lotus was adamant in her desire to safeguard the artifact from falling into their malicious grasp. Before she could fully explain the significance of the Arogia Medica, an unexpected interruption cut short her transmission. Static filled the Tenno's communication channels as the ominous silence hinted at an unsettling presence lurking within the shadows. Suddenly, a blood-curdling roar echoed throughout the decrepit corridors, and the Tenno were met with an unrousing horde of grotesque infested creatures. Mag and Duck, seasoned warriors that they were, skillfully unleashed a hail of gunfire, cutting down the writhing abominations. The air filled with acrid stench of decay and the crackling of arcane weapons. Seeking refuge, the team managed to secure themselves behind the sanctuary of a fortified door. Temporarily safe from the relentless onslaught, they took a moment to catch their breath. However, their reprieve was short-lived as Duck noticed something amiss with Mitsuki. Angst gripped Lil Duck as she noticed the telltale signs of ghoul poison coursing through Mitsuki's veins. Time was of the essence, and Duck knew that urgent medical attention was crucial to save their friend's life. Turning to Mag, Duck implored with a sense of urgency to find a way to tend to Mitsuki's dire condition. But once again, when they tried to talk in peace, they heard rattling bones in the distance. With their communication cut off from the Lotus, they could only rely on their wits and battle prowess to survive the relentless onslaught of the encroaching horde. Mitsuki sought shelter behind the two seasoned warriors, her small frame trembling with fear and pain. The weight of responsibility pressed heavily on Mag and Lil Duck as they fought with determination to both defend themselves and ensure Mitsuki's safety. The echoes of gunfire filled the air once again, each shot a desperate effort to push back the ravenous infested. Amidst the chaos, they continued their relentless search for the Arogia Medica, knowing that this artifact held the key to saving Mitsuki's life. The fight wore on and even the most skilled warrior can be brought to their knees in the face of overwhelming odds. A tide of infested creatures overwhelmed Lil Duck, disarming her and leaving her defenseless against their nightmarish assault. But in a twist of fate, it was Mitsuki who crawled to the weapon and threw it back into the hands of Lil Duck, saving her, but not anticipating an attack from behind, which left Mitsuki with a mortal wound dealt by one of the infested. Mag and Duck quickly dispatched all of the infested and ran to Mitsuki, who was motionless and barely breathing. Time was of the essence even more now, and they knew they had to quickly find the Arogia Medica Lotus was mumbling about all the time. 
On the other side of the Orokin portal and the Orokin vault, the deafening rumble of Grenier galleons reverberated through the cavernous depths as they unleashed their forces into the ancient structure. Waves of Grenier troops stormed forward, their footsteps echoing ominously against the vaulted walls. The intruders stumbled upon a ghastly scene. The remnants of their fallen ghouls lay scattered on the ground, some still feasting on their lifeless bodies of their fallen comrades. A grisly sight indeed. As they advanced deeper into the shadows, a determined squad of Grenier lancers and ballistas discovered the portal, securing it for their imposing leader, Captain War, and his company. With arrogance befitting a tyrant, Captain War stepped forth, his voice booming with self-righteousness as he delivered another grandiose speech, praising his brothers and sisters and proclaiming their triumph over the Orokin Vault. But just as Captain War's ego swelled, their progress was halted by the infested. Like a relentless tempest, the nightmarish creatures surged forth from the shadows, launching a ferocious ambush on the Grenier invaders the moment they crossed the threshold. The Grenier warriors found themselves facing an onslaught of feral monstrosities. However, the tide of battle took an even darker turn. A group of Grenier lancers tried to hack an Orokin console, and in their futile attempt to hack it, the Grenier inadvertently activated the long dormant Medica protocol hidden within the ship's systems. Unbeknownst to them, the activation triggered the awakening of neural sentry drones that floated across the vessel like malevolent specters. These eerie drones, designed around sinister Orokin technology, descended upon the faces of Grenier and infested alike, corrupting their very being in process. The corrupted warrior's eyes gleamed with an unnatural malevolence and they turned on their former allies with an unholy fervor. Now the Grenier found themselves fighting on two fronts, battling against the relentless infested and defending themselves from their own corrupted comrades controlled by the Noral Sentry. Amidst the chaos, Captain War's grand plans crumbled in the face of the unforeseen consequences. The once seemingly invincible Grenier now struggled to survive against the overwhelming forces aligned against him. Desperation hung in the air as the battle grew increasingly dire, but somehow he kept alive. Back to the Tenno Mag and her companions, they finally found the Rogia Medica. When seeing the device and the Orokin pod, Mag saw a faint vision of a life she vaguely remembered the Golden Cradle. She put Mitsuki into the pod and began interfacing with a console nearby, activating the device. The device lit up and a surge of electricity ran over Mitsuki who screamed in pain. Mag and Lil Duck knew they could do nothing, so they just stared. And as soon as the device powered down, the Ostrom girl got back on her feet and took off her blindfold her eyes completely white, looking at Mag and the Solaris operative as if she was never blind. But what happened next will be seen in the last video of the series. Thank you for watching everyone and I wish you a very nice day. Goodbye.